we like to play there, but uh, things kind of switched up a little bit. So nice to know that John C. Smith, I had a you know a little familiarity with the program. Though. And, and secondly, if, if you would have been offered from there or a and Central or one of those schools, do you, do you think you would have seriously considered going? Most likely. Um, who knows what the indecision would have been, but uh, at that point when you're coming from where I came from in terms of, you know, a three-star recruit and all that, any scholarship offer, I don't care where it came from, would have been uh, highly considered. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yes, sir. Next, we have Mark Medina, USA Today. Hey, Steph, good to see you. Um, I was wondering, with the uh, the one-year anniversary approaching of the season shutdown, um, what were your memories of how you initially processed the news that, you know, the Warriors were going to play that game without fans against Brooklyn? And then how did you process, you know, the other turn of events with the OKC-Utah game? Um, well, I was just coming off my hand injury, so I was, you know, excited to be back on the floor playing. Played against Toronto, I think, a couple of days before. Um, I started to get some flu-like symptoms the day after. So I was kind of – I think I missed the game right before our, our scheduled Brooklyn game. So I was kind of um, all over the place in terms of getting educated on what, you know, COVID-19 really was, if I had to get tested for it. And then meanwhile, you know, the, the league is uh, kind of in flux in terms of, you know, no fans, which was, I think, um, on the docket for our Brooklyn game. We were all trying to figure out what that was going to look like. And then I remember being at home watching just uh, think some other games and then hearing, you know, about what was going on in uh, OKC. And, and from there, everything seemed to just be moving a million miles an, an hour in terms of, you know, updates and uh, getting questions answered around if we were going to be playing. And then obviously Adam Silver's decision to, to shut it down. So um, obviously unprecedented. There's nothing like, you know, that moment. And, uh, it is while it's already been, you know, a year and all that, you know, our society has been through outside of just, you know, the NBA circles. Uh, next up, Terrell Thomas, USA uh, good morning, Steph. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, two Absolutely. Part, two part question for you. This will be the first All Star game in which you're able to actually unveil your personal brand, the Curry brand. Uh, do you have anything special lined up as far as apparel or sneakers for that? And then, secondly, what do you think of the field as far as the three point contest? What do you think of the field and uh, your oppositions, your opponents? Yeah, it is. It's uh, it's humbling. It's pretty pretty amazing. To you know, rock your own shoes, rock your own brand and what we stand for on the, on, you know, the bright lights of an all-stars, you know, games stage. Uh, you know, I got a specific all-star shoe, which there'll be a story around that, that I'll uh, talk about you know, later. But, you know, like you said, anytime you have an opportunity to be on this, on this stage and considering how, you know, my last you know year and a half has been with injuries and all that, being away from the game, uh, it means a lot. It's something I don't take for granted. I'm, you know, obviously appreciative of the opportunity and to obviously share with the world even more what, what this brand means and, um, and how people can uh, participate in it. So uh, definitely excited about that. Three-point shootout is going to be awesome. Um, I haven't done it in a couple of years, so uh, it's kind of a twofold. It's good competition. Hopefully I can get it done, shoot well. And it's a good warm-up for, for the game since everything's, you know, in one night. So it'll be a little different experience on that front, but uh, – Looking forward to uh, to getting back out there. Next up, uh, Leandro Torres from El Comercio. Hi, Steph. It's Leonardo Torres from Peru. Hope you're well. Steph, does it mean anything special to play alongside LeBron James for the first time in your career? For sure. I'd love to get that experience, having played against him for last 12 years and I was in the finals and all that back and forth and all-star games and, and whatnot. So, um, you know, it'll be, it'll be dope to compete and go out here, try to get this win, uh, represent team LeBron. It's, uh, it's going to be a pretty cool experience. We got a you know, stacked team 
and uh, ready to go out there and, you know, just enjoy ourselves and get a, a brand new experience that, you know, me and him have never had before. Um, should be pretty memorable for sure. And what does it mean for you to be in this All-Star game? I mean, it means a lot. I, like I said, I've been obviously with injuries last year and, um, you know, with the pandemic and everything that's happened over the last year, to, you know, how much work I put in to get my game uh, back to where I want it to be and to be healthy and just be able to play at a high level means a lot. And, and obviously when you're uh, able to represent your team, your family and, uh, and everybody that's helped you along the way, and, you know, on this stage, it means a lot. It's not something that, Again, I take for granted at all. I know how much hard work goes into it. I know, um, you know what it means to be recognized in all, as an all-star, and, it, and it, it definitely means a lot. Next, uh, Patrick Murray. Hi, Patrick Murray from Forbes Sports here. I'm just wondering, um, obviously the all-star game is a great kind of celebration of the NBA family, but at the end of this Uh, at the end of the season, we're going to have the Olympics. Is that something that's on your mind? And are you kind of keen to participate and maybe get that gold medal that's currently one of the few things you haven't won? Yeah, it's been on the radar, obviously, you know, going into the last summer before it was, po it was postponed. And, you know, right now there's a lot that's uh, a lot of questions, obviously, in terms of how, you know, things will be uh, – put together for the Olympics and timing and, and coming out of this season, which is, you know, an, a, a different experience for, for us as NBA players with the schedule and all that. So um, I'm kind of just staying patient right now and, and we've talked to a lot of people from USAB. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll closer to hopefully answer that question, whether I want to play or not. Um, it's just right now there's a lot, there's a lot going on in terms of the second half of the NBA season, which is obviously the priority right now. Uh, Christian Politai from Rutu, Finland. Yes, hi. Uh, thank you, Steph. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, Christian Palotia with Rutu in Finland. Comparisons are always made between players with similar skill sets, like yourself with former greats like Pete Maravich and Mahmoud Abdur Rauf. But especially some of us Europeans often feel like you're kind of an evolution of Juan Carlos Navarro, especially when it comes to your ability to, to relocate and the audacity to take and make ridiculous shots at times. Is he someone you've drawn inspiration from, or is that something that Europeans have just made up? No, when uh, I've played against him a couple – or. I think one time in international basketball and I've seen a lot of film and his creativity his like you said, his, his shot selection, um, just his rhythm on the floor. I, it, it jumps off the screen and, you know, when you play against him. So uh, I've seen him take the one footed threes and like you said, all his moving all around the floor uh, and, and learned a little, you know, a little bit in terms of something that I can implement into my game. Um, I've tried the one for threes a couple of times, made a couple. So definitely some inspiration there. And, uh, you know, any guy that you can kind of see yourself in when they're out there on the floor, you obviously pay attention to. And, and there's a, an opportunity every time to kind of expand your skill set by, you know, what you see other guys do. Um, so definitely he's been on my radar for sure. Next we have uh, Alvin Whitney from TNT. Good morning, Steph. How you doing? Good morning, everybody. Uh, Steph, I just wanted to get your, your thoughts on, you know, on this voter suppression bills and, and, and what can you guys do as players to continue to, to, to fight the good fight? Uh, continue to be educated, continue to understand what's going on in our world in real time. Um, and, you know, align ourselves with, you know, the experts who are you know, doing this work on a daily basis and, I think I've had a uh, fortunate opportunity to get to know Stacey Abrams very well and, you know, follow her work. And obviously, obviously being here in Atlanta, it's the, you know, the ground floor of what, you know, she's been able to, uh, to accomplish in terms of, you know, her fair, fair vote, fair, fair act um, initiatives and, you know, fighting voter suppression 
365, 24-7, not just, you know, as you get close to an election. So um, very appreciative of, of her example, her dedication, her and her and entire team. Um, she's been a huge, you know, uh, voice and inspiration for how we can stay in part of the conversation and lean on those who are in the community doing the work, continue to raise awareness, um, you know, fundraise, whatever the case is, and make this a, a year long thing and not something that you know just happens again in, in, in election season. Thank you. Uh, next, we have Mark Haynes with Clutch Points. Hey, what's up, Steph? What's happening? This, uh, this uh, you've been around this go around. It's a little different this year in the All-Star. Um, but I wanted to ask you, what's some things you remember about your first All-Star game appearance? We broke up just a little bit. Say the last part again, my bad. What What do you remember from your first All Star game experience? It was overwhelming for sure. Uh, that was like a true All Star weekend experience where you have you know a schedule filled stuff from the time you land to the time the game happens. I had been at All Star weekend maybe three times before doing the rookie game or three point contest. In my days or my weekend ends on Saturday night, um, and you kind of kind of can let loose when you're an all star. You want to enjoy yourself, but things just keep happening. And then you get to Sunday, and it's like, dang, we still got to play the game. And you're kind of exhausted mentally and physically just because you're overwhelmed by just you know the opportunity and the stage and uh, all the different experiences. So uh, New Orleans was fun that year. It was it was awesome to realize the goal of playing in the All-Star game and being, you know, with you know, the best 24 in, in the lead. And, um, yeah, I, I, had a, I had a big Saturday night. I do remember that. And just with my family and my, my friends enjoying the, in the moment and uh, celebrating all the work that went into it. Um, and Sunday was a blur. Uh, so I think every year since I've been able to kind of just uh, – be in the moment a little bit more because um, you have a little bit more experience of how to you know pace yourself throughout the weekend. Next, uh, Julio Montenegro. Hi, Steph. Congratulations for the All-Star Game. Uh, Thank you. What do you think that makes LeBron James special to keep an All-Star level at 36 years old? One more time, say the last part. What do you think makes LeBron James special to keep that level at 36 years old? Oh, I mean, he's obviously blessed physically, but that only takes you so far. He, he puts the work in. Everybody who has been around him has talked about his uh, his, his work ethic and, and just the example that he kind of represents on that front. And just because you're blessed physically and have a certain skill set doesn't mean you can just show up at the gym and, and, uh, and sustain that for as many years as he has. So um, he obviously has a blessed basketball mind um, and has proven that, you know, over the course of years and been able to evolve his game as, as time has gone on, you know, proved a lot of people wrong that he could play at this level, um, even – even at this point in his career. So uh, that's, uh, that's a, a great example to have of somebody who takes, you know, the, the work behind the scenes as serious as, uh, you know, when you see him on the court. Uh, 